everyone! Welcome to my Q&A video. This is my first time ever doing a Q&A. Um, I've been on YouTube for almost a year, so this is exciting. I was tagged by my friend Jill, who is also a scrapbooker, and she's the designer for Gossamer Blue and countless other design teams. She's great. So she did a YouTube video um, for a Q&A uh, Q YouTube video inspired by another scrapper. Uh, Andrea Gray. Uh, if you guys don't know her, she's also on Instagram um, and on YouTube as Retro Hip Mama. And Jill is on as Jill or Pete. So she was inspired to do a Q&A video so that, you know, we can uh, get to know or so that you guys can get to know us, you know, as scrapbookers and as people too because, you know, we do put out a lot of uh, scrapbooking stuff but you know we're also just people who just like to scrap you know and um, so I wanted to take part and she tagged me so I wanted to take part in this Q&A uh, I'm inviting all of you to go down below and ask me some questions if you guys are interested in learning anything about scrapbooking, anything about me, anything about the industry, um, any questions that you might have, I welcome you to ask me down below and I will try my best to answer you guys in another version of this Q&A. But for today, I have my handy little notebook here with all of my notes. And I have listed 10 questions to just answer to you guys that I have been receiving throughout my scrapbooking. But first off, I'm going to start with the intro. So I am Naftali. I live in Los Angeles, California. I'm 26 years old. I'm married and I have a son. Um, and I have been living in California most of my life. I was born in Mexico, came here when I was really, really young and have been a Cali girl since then. I love California. I li love being close to the beach. Um, I like how it's hot outside and how it's cold the next day. I just love it. Um, what else? <laughs> so that's me. Um, I also love scrapbooking, obviously, and I'll be answering some more questions about that. Um, first of all, I wanted to let you guys all know that I have been on YouTube for almost a year. On April 27th, it'll be a year. Today is April 12th, the day that I'm filming this. Um, and today is actually my second birthday on Instagram. So I started uh, my Instagram dedicated fully to scrapbooking back in 2015 after I had my son. And I was looking for something to do while I was a stay-at-home mommy because I was going to stay home for about a year. And I did stay for almost two years before I went back to work. Um, so I wanted something to do, and I felt like I finally had the time to do what I've always wanted to do, and that was scrapbooking. So I took the plunge, and I decided that I was going to be sharing some of this stuff on my blog and on Instagram. And so it took me a little while to figure out what I was doing. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do, like, mommy blogging or scrapbooking. And a few months after I did start my Instagram, um, we actually moved out of uh, family when, where we were staying, and we got our own place, and this is our home now. Uh, we've been here for almost two years. Um, it's a very tiny home, but I have found the proper or the right corner, I might say, to keep my scrappy stuff. And I love how my husband, you know, lets me have my space without complaining and saying that I'm hogging the house. Um, and I just love the fact that I could have, I finally have a space dedicated for all of this. And not just that, but I have the time to do it as well. So that's a little about me. Today, like I said, is the second birthday of my Instagram. So yay, happy birthday <laughs> to my Instagram. Um, it's been a long journey. And to be honest, I started from scratch. Like I didn't exactly have an idea of what I was doing. All I knew was that I wanted to inspire people in a certain form, um, and I feel like I've kind of done that. You know, I put my stuff out there, I put my scrapbooking out there, um, not to show it off, but to to inspire other 
people who want to go out and scrapbook. Um, I know it can be very intimidating sometimes when you see all these other layouts that people with tons of experience have, uh, you know, been scrapbooking for years. But, you know, it shouldn't let you shouldn't be feeling intimidated, and that's why Jill has this idea for us to go out and tell it how it is, and and basically tell you guys that you know we're we're all on the same page. We're all figuring this out on our own. Um, you know, just lately I was thinking, you know, um, scrapbookers are like artists, and artists don't just go out and get jobs. Artists do their art, work on their art. And then that art brings in the work and brings in the jobs. So that's kind of how it is for scrapbooking. You know, not everything is handed to you. You actually have to go out and start from scratch and build yourself up. So um, I'm going to be answering a few questions that's kind of going to go with what I just talked about. And I'm going to start off with the first question. So how did you get started with scrapbooking? Um, I was about... 16 years old when a church friend, uh, there was a couple of church friends who brought up the topic of scrapbooking and this church friend of mine, she was older, she, um, she's like mom age, I was 16 years old so she was way older than me. Um, she said that, she introduced to me that she had been scrapbooking. We had a small little scrapbook shop open in our town which no longer exists but at the time they took me, they introduced me to it, and I kind of just fell in love with it, like, automatically. Um, I had always been a journaling type of girl, um, just always hands-on. I wasn't into the video games and going out and playing outside. I wasn't. Even as a kid, I was the one who was trying to figure out little things to do. So um, when I found out about scrapbooking, I kind of just fell right into it. I remember the first time that she took me to a scrapbook store. I walked in and the smell of the paper kind of slapped me in the face and I was hooked. Um, for a long time though, this was since I was about 15 or 16, so for a long time all I would really do was collect things and go out and buy things but never really use them. And it took me a while for me to really, um, you know, just feel comfortable to start creating um, and that was probably when I was pregnant <laughs> and not really willing to do very much except sit down and watch YouTube videos. So um, I was on YouTube and I think I searched scrapbooking videos and Tracy, Tracy, oh my goodness, what is her name? She's huge on YouTube, um, she's a psychologist, like a psychiatrist I think, so Tracy was the first one that I watched on YouTube. I'm gonna write it down right here for you guys to, uh, so that I tell you the correct person. Sorry about that. I can't just bring it out of the top of my head. Um, I watched her for a very long time and I learned a lot of techniques. I learned a lot of things that I could do with paper and I, that's the way that I started feeling comfortable with it first. Although I wasn't out scrapbooking, I was simply watching what she was doing. Um, and that's basically how I got started into it uh, once my son was born and once we moved in here. We moved in this house in August, so around that time, September, October, I started off with my first layouts and just kept going with it. Okay, so question number two now. Who are your favorite scrapbookers? So I think the, like I said, I was very inspired by Tracy. Um, to just get comfortable with the idea that I can work with paper. But I think the true inspiration that I had um, with my style, my personal style of scrapbooking, was definitely Seuss Fish, which I'm so sad that she's just out of YouTube and out of blogging. And I understand, you know, life changes and you gotta do your thing. And sometimes, you know, the focus that you have on scrapbooking has is not the most important thing in life for everyone. So I miss her. I miss her a lot because I found a lot of inspiration in her layouts. She also had that very fresh uh, white look to her layouts and that was my favorite part about it. Um, and 
I truly miss her. She's definitely my number one. Um, but I've also been uh, inspired by Jen Scow. I watched her for a long time as well. Um, and basically, like, now I'm just inspired by what I find on Instagram. Um, I follow people who I, whose style I like and whose style I, I feel um, pushes me to go create. Um, I like the minimalist, and then I kind of also like just the whole girly and trendy stuff. So, you know, it, I think it shifts with time, but um, definitely I think my foundation <laughs> to my, you know, style of scrapbooking was definitely inspired by Seuss Fish, and I hope she can come back soon. So if you're watching this, Seuss, come back, please. Come back, I miss you. I miss your layouts. <laughs> Okay, so question number three. What is your style? Okay, so I don't really know. <laughs> um, I know that I like the white cardstock, and I'm sure that you guys have obviously caught on that it's basically what I do. Um, I like it because to me, I feel like the white is the perfect um clean slate for me to pour my ideas on. Um, I really, really feel intimidated by starting with a colored background. Uh, as much as I love a paper, as much as I can love a pattern paper, I feel intimidated to start putting stuff on it. I feel like I just wouldn't be able to match you know, stuff on it. I feel like it's going to look way too cluttered. Um, so, you know, I like the white card stock because it really does build um, from nothing. And that's what I'm comfortable doing. Um, like I said, it's just a, a way for me to let my cre creativity flow with completely blank, blank slate. Um, you know, it's a preference. And I definitely do admire those scrapbookers who create amazing layouts um, using cardstock. Uh, my friend Jill herself, she can mix up colors amazingly. Um, I also like Kat Martin, Kat G. Martin on Instagram. That woman <laughs> is amazing. Like, oh, every time I watch her YouTube videos, um, I just feel inspired by her idea. She's so clever and she can put any layout together no matter what supplies she's using. She's pretty amazing. Um, so, you know, I admire those scrapbookers and I do find inspiration from that, but my preference and my comfort is with my white layouts. And I did get a question on Instagram and I wanted to read it. This is by Scrappy Like a Fox on Instagram. And she wrote, love all your fresh and lovely layouts on white cardstock. What's your favorite white cardstock and why do you like it? So, um, I'm going to be honest. I'm not picky with my white cardstock. I like um, value for my money. I'm Obviously, I have a hoarding problem. <laughs> but I'm very frugal and I don't like to spend more than I should for supplies. So, the white cardstock that I use is right here. And I wanted to share with you guys. This is a paper pad, 12 by 12 paper pad, that I found at Walmart. Yes. And it came with 40 sheets. Um, and then they're perforated, just like any regular paper pad. Um, they're, they've got, like, the texture front and the flat back. So you can just pick whichever side you want. And uh, for 40 sheets, it's only $5. So um, since my focus is using the white cardstock, um, I don't go out and buy the expensive stuff. I like going to Michael's when they have sales and purchasing their white cardstock. And I can truly say that I prefer that one over this one because I feel like this one kind of has a bluish hue to it and the other one's more of a solid white. But, um, White is white is white is white. So, um, you know, for those of you who want to find a frugal way to get your cardstock, especially on, you know, just basic colors like white, 
Walmart has these paper pads with 40 sheets and they're good quality. Uh, the watercolor, you know, you obviously can't be, I, I just figure in any paper, if you start rubbing too much, it's going to start shredding. So um, that's the only thing I can say about it. But honestly, the reason I like it, Scrappy Like a Fox, is because it's cheap and it's a lot for the value. So that's just me. Um, I'm, like I said, always trying to find ways to save a little money on all the stuff that I have. Okay, so the next question is question number four. White backgrounds, why? And I think I already answered that question. Um, like I said, it's my way to let out my creativity and just let it flow. And I feel comfortable with the white cardstock. I think I already answered this question. So let's move on. Uh, question five, where do you get your supplies? So most of my supplies that I've gotten are from scrapbook.com. That is the website that I would recommend. Um, I know that they, you can find some stuff on Amazon, but I'm just not a very big fan of Amazon. I like um, getting all my stuff in one place. And scrapbook.com has everything that you need. Um, they do have coupons every once in a while. I think that every year they have at least a 10% off coupon, and I just Google it, to be honest. I just Google up coupons and try to find whatever I can. Um, if you sign up for their emails, you will be getting a lot of sales and stuff, but uh, basically the way that I shop is in bulk. So about two or three times a year, I will literally go on scrapbook.com and spend minimum $200 and stuff. And I know that sounds ridiculous, and it probably is, but that's just the best way that I can, um, you know, build up on supplies. Um, because I feel like I just don't have the, the money to be going on all the time. And I also feel like that'll build up even more stuff. Um, because I'm also going to Michael's and Joann's and Hobby Lobby and Walmart and, you know, always purchasing little things here and there. So, uh, scrapbook.com is definitely the website that I would recommend. They've got everything you need. They've got all the brands. Um, and sometimes they have the coupon, so that's the way for me to go. Um, I do shop at Michael's and I like taking advantage of their 40% off coupons. Um, Joann's has them. At Joann's you can use more than one coupon at a time, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, and Hobby Lobby as well has their coupons. So, you know, a mix of everything. Uh, I kind of just scrap look around for whatever I find um yeah thanks for stopping by everyone this is it for part one I will be back for the last five questions next week in another video thanks for stopping by I hope you enjoyed see you next week bye bye